All right, the book I'm going to be reading is Cassie's Sweetberry Pie, a Civil War story by Karen B. Winnick. Sweet Sweetberry Pie. Cassie made up a song as she pressed soft, sticky dough into the pie tin. She picked up a plump huckleberry out of the bowl and popped it into her mouth. Squish, sugary syrup burst all over her tongue. With war raging between the states, Cassie couldn't remember the last time there had been a pie. But she had picked these huckleberries, Mama had carefully measured out just enough precious flour, and baited three potatoes for the little sugar and butter so Cassie could make her pie. Crickety creak! What was that noise? Cassie checked the door latch. Union soldiers were right here in Mississippi. She needed to be cautious. The latch was still in place. Cassie turned towards their bedroom where Mama and Papa slept. Willie! Sarilyn! Cassie shouted, and the brothers and sisters stopped jumping on the bed. She grabbed the cat as he scooped down. You almost trampled Boots! Boots is a bad Yankee, and we're chasing him! Willie began to cough. All that moving around is making you sick again, said Cassie, stroking Boots' fur. When is Mama coming home? Sarah rubbed her eyes. When she's done feeding our wounded soldiers at the hospital. Cassie lifted Sarah Lynn off the bed and set her down on the floor. Is Papa there? Willie reached out for the cat. Thank goodness, no, Cassie said. Papa's off with General Lee's army, far away in Pennsylvania. With a pang, Cassie whispered, and s whispered a silent prayer for Papa. There's the kids jumping on the bed, and there's Boots. She went back to her pie, cutting long strips of dough for the lattice top. Sweet, sweet berry pie, she sang. Outside, hoofs pounded on the dirt road. Cassie ran to the window and saw Sam Banks, son of the closest neighbor, jump down from his horse. She went to greet him. I came to warn you, Sam wiped sweat from his brow. It's Yankees. They're on foot, coming through the woods. They'll be here within an hour. He looked past her. Where's your ma? She's not here. Cassie swallowed hard. Are you sure the Yankees are coming right here to Marin? They're coming, Sam said. All of you have better come out to our place. Cassie shook her head. Mama told us to keep here at the house if there was trouble, she said. Then hide what you can, Sam urged. They'll take everything they see. He started towards his horse. I'd best off be to warn the others. Yankees are coming, shouted Willie. He grabbed the broom and pointed the handle. I'll show them. You put that down, Willie, Cassie latched the door. Sarah Lynn started to cry. She tugged at Cassie's skirt. Are they going to hurt us? They won't lay one finger on you, Cassie said, hoping it was true. She put her arms around her sister. Deep down, Cassie's heart pounded. What would she do if they came face to face with a Yankee? She took a deep breath. <sighs> if only Mama were here, she'd know what to do. But I have to be the brave one, Cassie said aloud. She wondered if she could be. She heard awful stories, how Yankees stripped houses bare and how they stole food. Food, Cassie looked around. Where could they hide it? Boots darted past her into the clove. Cassie watched him disappear under the bed and clapped her hands. The bed! Willie, Sarah Lynn, help me. Willie, hurry and fetch your sack of potatoes. Sarah Lynn, help me gather up our turnips and beans and mama preserves too. Cassie ran to the lander and pulled up the chunk of cheese. She wrapped what, she, what was left of their pork in the cloth. Willie tugged the sack of potatoes. I threw these all in them. No, you won't. Cassie yanked the sack away. Quick! Help me hide everything. Cassie shoved Mama's fine cutlery, cutlery under the bed. She put Mama's embroidery linens there too. Here's them hiding the food under the bed. And here's Boots. What else could she hide? Papa's letters! Cassie opened the chest and took them out. There, these go under the bed too. What if the Yankees look there, Willie asked. They better not. Cassie said firmly, but her heart sank. 
Even if she closed the curtain around Mama and Papa's bed, the Yankees could pull it open and look underneath. Mmm, Cassie, these taste good. Cassie turned to Sarah Lynn, who was dipping her fingers into the bowl, stuffing her face with berries. Sarah Lynn, no, my berries! Cassie stared at her sister, with cheeks and chins were smudged with dark red berry juice. Berry stains, thought Cassie. Maybe she looked at Willie. Here's Cassie hiding the stuff under the bed, and here's the two siblings eating the berries. Please hurry, both of you. Climb into Mama's bed. Cassie hustled them into the clove. I promise I won't let them hurt you. Please do as I say. Willie and Sarah Lynn scrambled up. Boots leaped up, too. Cassie tucked them all under the big quilt. Cassie threw wood into the fireplace. She tossed more and more logs on the hearth until the fire crackled and the heart began to spread through the room. Cassie fanned herself and looked at her brother and sister. Their face were flushed. I'm too hot, cried Willie, cracking up the quilt. But you need to stay put, said Cassie, covering him up again. Cassie dashed back to the table and whipped up the flower mess. She hid the pan and tin dough behind the sideboard. Now for the berries. She carried the bowl to the bed. She scooped up some berries and squished them. What are you doing, asked Sarah Lynn. You'll see, said Cassie. Just be still. With the berry juice, she painted across Willie and Sarah's cheeks, spots on their forehead, on Sarah's nose and chin. How about some for boots, asked Willie. None for him. Cassie shoved the bowl of berries under the bed and scrubbed the stains off her hands. When she looked at the window, Cassie saw the sky was gray as a tortoise's back. The branches of the gum tree swayed in a dance with the wind. How long do we have to be in bed for, asked Willie. It depends, Cassie said, but you have to stay put. She, she spied her school read on the shelf. I'm going to read you a story. Cassie sat down in the rocker with her book and began to read. Again and again, she looked to make sure the fire was still blazing. A few times, she got up to throw on another log. It's so hot, Willie pulled on his collar. It needs to be, Cassie said. She counted the logs, hoping there would be enough. Suddenly, she heard voices. The voices grew louder and louder, laughing and shouting. Yankees! Willie's eyes grew bigger. Heavy boots stumped up the porch step. Hard rapping shook the door, the walls and the windows rattling. Open up! Open up now! Voices yelled out. Be still! Don't open up your mouths, Cassie whispered. And whatever I say, please don't argue. Quickly, she closed the curtains around the bed. Cassie walked slowly to the door. Who's there? Soldiers of the Union Army, let us in. And we'll, we'll break down the door. Cassie's hands shook as she slid up the latch. She opened the door a crack. One of the Yankee soldiers pushed his way in. Cassie stepped back. Another soldier in tattered blue uniform and dirty boots came in too. Soon the room was filled in dust smell of sweat. You live here? A skinny soldier wiped his forehead. Why, it's so hot. Cassie stared at the flushed face. Why, he's just a boy, she thought. Not much older than me. Some Yankees rushed past Cassie, only pulled blankets from the dresser. Two others threw open the sideboard, sideboard and grabbed cups. Another kicked over the chest. Here's the soldiers looking through the house. And here's the boy. It's hot, and he's not much older than Cassie. From behind the curtain, Willie coughed. The soldier turned towards the eclope. What's in here? One of them flung back the curtain. Cassie held her breath. Boots jumped down. Cassie rushed to grab him, but he darted under the bed. Oh no, she thought. The young soldier hurried forward. He bent down and reached beneath the bed. Here, cat. He picked up Boots, gently rubbing his chin. You remind me of my cat, always getting into. Just then, Willie and Sarah Lynn sat up. What's wrong with them, another soldier asked. Cassie crossed her fingers tightly, her back. Measles, she said. One soldier backed away. That's contagious, another shouted. 
The younger soldier stepped closer and looked hard at Willie and Sarah Lynn. He touched their foreheads. Feels like a fever, he said. It's measles, all right. And then with the wink, he placed Boots in Cassie's arms. Let's get out of here, several soldiers cried. They rushed outside. The young soldier was the last to leave. He turned and smiled at Cassie. He, she smiled back. Quickly, she put up the latch. They're gone, she said with a sigh. They're really gone. Willie and Sarah Lynn kicked back the covers and jumped up and down. We really fooled them. Here they are jumping up and down. Well, not all of them, said Cassie, watching Boots lick very smudges from their face. But you two were a great help. She gave Sarah Lynn and Willie each a hug. Now please help me clean up before Mom comes home, she said, and they're all going to bake. That's what's left of my sweets. Sweet berry pie. The end.